Welcome to my lecture online. Now this next problem, which deals with the Young's modulus, the bulk modulus, and the shear modulus, well, that's the type of problem where if you didn't have the right equation memorized, you will never get the answer to this one. It's not necessarily a hard one, but what makes these tests hard is that you have to have everything memorized that you may need for this test. And it's a lot of things you have to have memorized. Now most of us have memorized the equations for the Young modulus, the bulk modulus, and the shear modulus, but we may not have memorized this equation right here, the relationship between the Young's modulus and the bulk modulus, and the Young modulus, and the shear modulus. Now of course in India they call those names a little bit different, the shear modulus is actually called the rigidity, the modulus of rigidity, but same thing, means the same thing. Now, notice that these two equations, they have what we call the Poisson's ratio, which is the ratio between the deformation in the direction of the applied force, as opposed to the deformation in the opposite direction, in the perpendicular direction to that. So without going into those details, here let's read the question, let's look at the answers, and then let's figure out the strategy of how to do this. So it says if y, k, and nu are the values of Young's modulus, bulk modulus, and the modulus of rigidity of any material respectfully, choose the correct relation for these parameters. Now what I've done is instead of using the symbols that they gave us, I've used the symbols that makes it easier to keep track of it. Y for Young's modulus, B for bulk modulus, and S for shear modulus, because that just makes it easier. And now I've written the answers with those particular symbols. Now, of course, in the test, they use those symbols, and of course, I find that very uh, confusing in a way, unless you're, you're typically used to using those particular symbols. Now, what about the concept and the strategy? What's the concept here? Well, the concept is that we have to find some sort of relationship between, let's say, the Young's modulus, the bulk modulus, and the shear modulus. Notice that every one of the four equations includes all three of these indices uh, for Young's, bulk, and shear modulus, and so somehow you have to be able to relate them to one another. So that means you need some sort of equation. And here are the two equations that relate the Young's modulus to the bulk modulus and the Young's modulus to the shear modulus with Poisson's ratio in there. So if we want to eliminate Poisson's ratio, the concept is to find the relationship. So we're going to find the relationship between these. And we need to eliminate Poisson's ratio. So there's the concept and there's also the strategy to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve each of those equations for Poisson's ratio and set them equal to each other to eliminate Poisson's ratio and then we'll have a relationship between the three Young's, the bulk and the shear modulus. So on the first equation, multiplying through we get Young's modulus is equal to 3b minus 6b sigma. And then, when we move that across, we have, from here we can now write that 6b sigma is equal to 3b minus Young's modulus, and then divide both sides by 6b. Now we have Poisson's, uh, Poisson's ratio in terms of the other indices. All right, now the next equation, do the same thing. So we're going to write this as Young's modulus is equal to 2s plus 2s sigma, and that then means that 2s sigma is equal to y minus 2s, by moving this to the other side, and then divide by 2s, we get this. So now we have the two equations in terms of Poisson's ratio. So now we can go ahead and set those equal to each other. So in this case, we can write that 3b minus y over 6b must therefore be equal to y minus 2s over 2s. And then it's some simply algebra to simplify this. So what we should do is cross multiply. So we have uh, 6bs minus 2ys is equal to 6by, and 6b times that would be minus 12bs. Then notice we have common terms, so I can move this across and make this into 18bs minus uh, 2ys is equal to 6by. Hmm, hmm, hmm. 
So let's see here. We have B, S, and Y on the left. So let's start with the first one. Let's put B on one side and everything else on the other side. So we have 18 B, S minus 6 B, Y equals 2 Y, S. Factoring out a B, we get B times 18s minus 6y equals 2ys. And so we get B is equal to 2ys divided by 18s minus 6y. And factoring out a 2, oop, that was a 1 and an 8. Factor out a 2 so we can cancel out. So this is equal to ys over, divide the denominator by 2, we get 9s minus 3y. And so B is equal to that. Is that our first answer? And notice B equals YS over 9S. Wow, first time we got it right. We're lucky because if that was wrong, we'd have to go to the next one, the next one, solve for S, solve for Y to see which one was correct. But it looks like this matches answer A. And so that would then be the correct answer for that particular problem. Again, there's no way you would have gotten this problem unless you remember these two relationships. And most of us probably don't have that memorized, so that makes it extra challenging. And that is how it's done. Memorize for the test. You have to do a lot of memorization before you walk into this test. Matter of fact, we should do a video on how to prepare for this test, and one of the big parts of that is simply memorizing all the equations as much as you can. Well, Spend a list of the stuff that needs to be memorized. Well, start out with a list, right? We should probably make up a list, say, you have to memorize this. It'll be a big list. And yes, and kind of practice that over and over again so that it really sinks in, you, you remember it. But yeah, that's the big challenge on these tests is simply have to memorize a lot of things or you're not going to be able to solve some of these problems.